In this episode, we're going to talk about uh, iterated elimination of strictly dominated strategies. So this is going to be another uh, a third uh, solution concept that we're going to provide. Well, it's also intuitive. Well, what is the intuition behind it? Well, if you remember, uh, not all games have dominant strategy equilibrium. I mean, the best strategy that simply doesn't exist in many games. Well, but the thing is, we can sort of use this idea of better strategy and get rid of worse strategies, right? I mean, if, you, if one strategy is better than the other, well, then a rational player shouldn't choose the worst strategy. He should go for a better strategy. So, therefore, this idea that let's get rid of the worst strategies, eh, we can apply this to all the players. Well, once we apply it to all players, some of the strategies will, uh, will be dropped out of consideration. But then the game is going to shrink, meaning the number of strategies for each player is going to reduce. Well, the thing is we can repeat this uh, reasoning again. Well, here, however, I mean, uh, obviously, one very important assumption that we're making is that a uh, player's rationality, meaning nobody's going to go for a worse strategy, uh, the, the, the player's uh, rationality should be common knowledge. I mean, I should, if I'm a player, I should know that my opponent is rational, and so he is in fact going to get rid of those worse strategies. If I don't know that, well, then I shouldn't actually eliminate his dominated strategies, because maybe he is irrational player, and hence, uh, he's going to play uh, one of his uh, dominated strategies. So, if each player is rational and this rationality is common knowledge among the players, well then we should keep iterating this idea of uh, eliminating strictly dominated strategies. And at some point, probably we're going to stop because there's going to be no further uh, elimination because there's going to be no uh, strictly dominated strategies among the remaining strategies. So then uh, that's going to be the solution. Well, if uh, for each player there's a unique remaining strategy, well, we're going to call this game solvable uh, because for each player there's just one strategy that survives iterated elimination of strictly dominated strategies and we're going to call this uh, solution of the game. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, as I will uh, give you some other examples, not all games have, uh, not all games are uh, solvable, but so be it. Uh, let's first try to formalize this idea of uh, iterated elimination of strictly dominated strategies and, and, and work on one numerical example where the game is actually solvable and let's solve it. All right, so. What I'm going to do now is just formally define this idea of iterated elimination of strictly dominated strategies. So this process is a recursive process. So how do we start? Well, we start uh, iteration number zero. So each player has a strategy SI, remember? And so in iteration number zero, I'm going to define a set S sub I superscript zero, which means iteration zero uh, strategy space for player i. Well, this is the mixed strategy, all right, symmetrically, in iteration zero. Well, then I'm going to define iteration k. So this is the uh, surviving strategies after, uh, you know, iteration one, iteration two, iteration three, up to iteration k minus one, including k minus one, all right? So here, how am I going to define a set of strategies that survive all those k step of uh, elimination. Well, this is how we define it. So k basically starts from one, goes all the way to infinity, all right? So um, SIK is basically a set of strategies that already survived uh, in step k minus one, all right? So if k is one, for example, this is zero. All right, so in the first step, we are going to consider all the strategies available for player I. All right, well, what are those strategies? What is special about them? Well, this strategy is not dominated, meaning there exists no mixed strategy which remained 
after uh, a, a step k minus 1. All right, so again, if k is equal to 1, this is a sigma i 0, which basically means the set of all available strategies. So there exists no mixed strategy that survived, such that player i actually prefers to play this mixed strategy over his pure strategy si for every so whatever his opponent is doing but here whatever his opponent is doing is also becoming from uh the surviving strategy profiles all right so s minus i k minus one once again if k is equal to one this is going to be s minus i sub zero meaning all set of strategy profiles of his opponents so that basically says uh, uh, Si is in this set S sub i k if Si 1 uh, survives step k minus 1, 2 it is undominated given the strategies available after step k minus 1. All right well the thing is we define this not just for k equals 1 but as I said k equals 2, 3, 4 and so this continues forever. Well, the thing is, if the game is finite, meaning if all the players have finite limited strategies, this process will probably, and not probably, must stop at some finite number of steps. Even for many games, uh, this process is going to stop in some finite uh, many stages. But in some games, it may continue forever if our players have infinitely many strategies. Well, the thing is, if I define those sets, well, then, if I also define the mixed strategies that survived uh, in stage k, or step k, how? Well, it's just the probability distribution over the remaining strategies. All right, that's it. So what I'm going to do is then I'm going to set uh, and define a new set, S sub i infinity. It's just a notation. Well, that set contains all the elements in SI0, SI1, SI2, SI3, all the way to SI infinity, meaning the element in the set basically survives all the elimination stages. All right, remember, SI0 is well, originally what the strategy, uh, what uh, the, the, the set of strategies player I has. SI1, the set of strategies that survived first elimination. SI2, set of strategies for player I that survived two steps of elimination. SI3, the three steps of elimination. So an element in the set survives all the uh, uh, possible eliminations. So therefore, um, that's it. This is the set of strategies of player I that survives iterated elimination of strictly dominated strategies. All right. So here, uh, for any game, we call the game solvable if SI infinity is a singleton set for every player I. All right. And the remaining strategy, the surviving strategy, is going to, uh, is going to be the outcome, the, the strategy profile, I'm sorry, the, the surviving strategy profile is going to be the outcome of this game. Uh, well, so here, two things are uh, very, very important. When you look at the surviving strategies, once again, uh, it has to be one, uh, survived the previous stage, and two, it, should, it shouldn't be dominated strategy, given that his opponent's strategies are also survived stage k minus one. Okay, so now let's look at this simple game. Two player, each player has three strategies. Well, I know how things work. Um, so for example, here, I know that uh, a mixed strategy between A and B, like one half A and one half B, is going to strictly dominate C because the expected payoff of uh, A, B. Um, okay, so here's one mistake, I'm sorry. Uh, let's make it zero, let's make this uh, six, this makes zero. Okay, sorry for this mistake. So here now, uh, a mixture of A and B with one half, one half probability is going to dominate C. Why? Well, because the mixture of A, B here is going to give 
uh, 7 divided by 2, so 3.5, higher than 3. Same, uh, 3.5 is higher than 3. And then the mixture of 1 and 6, which is again 3.5 higher than 0. So therefore, C is in the first step, S1, I one, uh, S1, one, one, the C will be eliminated. Okay, because there exists a mixed strategy that dominated, strictly dominated C. So C is not going to be, so C is not an element of player one's first iteration. Well, is there any other, like A and B, is there any domination? A is better, but sometimes B is better. So you know what? I am looking only the pure strategy, so therefore, S11 is nothing but A and B. Okay? What about S, the second player's first iteration? Uh, well, when I do this, uh, don't forget to include C. All right? So here, when I write S21, I look at A and B domination. Well, B is sometimes better sometimes better, but sometimes A is better. So there's no domination. Originally, there's no domination between A and B. What about A and C? C is better, but sometimes A is better. There's no strict domination between A and C. And B, C, uh, well, two is worse than three, but four is better than zero. So there's no strict domination between B and C. So you know what? S21 is equal to A, B, C. So all the strategies of player two survives the first step of elimination. All right, good. Let's move on to the second step, S1, 2. Well, remember, now I am going to uh, look at A and B, and C is eliminated from this set. So is there any elimination between A and B? No. So therefore, S1, 2 is A and B. Well, what about S2, 2? Well, now, remember, is there any, so S2, 2, is there any strategy which is strictly dominated? But here, be careful. I mean, I know that in the previous step, none of those strategies were eliminated. But here, things have changed because now I know that my opponent's strategy should be coming from uh, not S1, it must be coming from S11, all right? Meaning C is no longer an available strategy for my opponent, player one. So therefore, once this is eliminated, okay, uh, is there any domination between A, B, and C now? Well, when I look at it, B is in fact better than A. All right, so therefore A is eliminated. Well, what about B and C? Is there any strict domination? Well, sometimes C is better, but sometimes B is better. So you know what? B, C survives the iterated elimination of strictly dominated strategies in step two. So keep going. Well, normally, of course, we do not need to calculate those sets. Um, you know, it's just look at the matrix and things are quite obvious. Uh, so it becomes like this two by two matrix. And now look at the two by two matrix and see if anything is, is dominated. So basically we, you know, when we solve this type of questions, we ignore this uh, uh, process. Uh, but I just wanted to apply, uh, you know, the, the, this exact process just to help you understand what all this notation really is. All right. Um, so now, we are in step three, S13. So in the third step, is there any strict domination between A and B? Previously there wasn't, all right? But now A is no longer an available strategy for player two. So now I have to compare five to two, six to one, and yes, B is strictly dominating A. So therefore A is no longer available. So you know what? Uh, S13 is just B. So, the strict elimination is going to stop for player one, right? Because uh, B is not uh, strictly dominated by uh, anything else because B is, is the only remaining strategy. So, what about S23? 
So it was B and C, and now is there any domination between these two? No. So B, C is still uh, the remaining strategies, and probably the final round, S1, 4, S2, 3. So S1, 4 is just B itself, right? I mean, I for the rest of S1, S1K, I'm going to repeat B because B is not dominated strategy because there's no strategy that can dominate B. All right, uh, because it's the only strategy. What about S2, uh, 4, I'm sorry. So here between B and C, uh, oh, by the way, um, four player, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I erased the wrong thing, did I? Uh, Player one has uh, a B is strictly dominating, so he eliminated A. Sorry, so A is eliminated. Um, so here, for player B only, um, for player one, I'm sorry, only B is available. For player two now, is it B or C? Which one is dominating? Well, obviously, four is better than zero. Um, A is no longer available for my opponent, right? So S uh, S two is coming from step three and step three uh only available strategy i'm sorry s1 i'm looking for a player two's uh, uh surviving set so this is s1 three and s1 three is only b so here given that only b is available uh, the dominant strategy is obviously uh, a dominated strategy is c so therefore remaining strategy is going to be all right, so player two will never play this one. So that's it. Uh, for any k greater than or equal to four, S1, four equals S2, four, which is equal to B. Again, they are not dominated uh, because there's, I mean, th th there's no other strategy that can dominate them. So you know what? S1 infinity and S2 infinity are both B. So this game is a solvable game and player one play B, player two play B is the solution of this game. Solution of this game. All right. So this is exactly how we apply iterated elimination of strictly dominated strategies.